Okay, Gemma, nice to meet you. Thanks for joining me. 2-1 um, against West Ham today. What were your kind of overall assessments of the game? Uh, I think first half, um, they kind of overran us a little bit. We've um, started with a new formation this season, 4-3-3. Mm -hmm. uh, we found out that West Ham were playing the same, so it was all about individual battles. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, in the first half, uh, my, quite a lot of our team, we didn't quite win our individual battles, so therefore they overran us. Probably could have scored even more than two goals. Mm -hmm. I noticed it was um, well. I just, I just been speaking to Natalie Crinian of, uh, of West Ham, and Natalie said that it was a game of two halves. Like uh, West Ham were kind of like the more dominant in the yeah, in the first half, the and first then they started off quite strong in the, at the beginning of the second. But for the last 35 minutes, you were throwing everything but the kitchen sink. Yeah, at definitely. Them. I mean, at half time, we had a bit of a talking to from the manager and the coaches, mm -hmm. and we sort of all got together and said to ourselves, if we don't come out the second half, we're just going to get drummed. So we mm -hmm. just had to give it everything we could. We uh, changed formation, made a few subs, which made a really big difference. And mm -hmm. as you said, game of two halves, we probably should have scored more than one goal. Do you feel a little bit hard done by? By you know, just do you feel that it was? Because in all honesty, I thought if you'd got that equaliser, because you hit the bar, didn't you? Yeah, we did. In the we last had, sort we of had minute. enough chances to win it. So yes, that's exactly. That's taught us a lesson that in the next few games for the rest of the season, we need to take our chances. Mm -hmm. So you don't win football matches without goals. Uh -huh. So that's what we need to work on. Okay, um, this is a quest because obviously, as I showed you, I've, I've been uh, talking to a lot of, of uh, women footballers, and 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 the question that I like to to run by them is. Um, in your eyes, Gemma, what, what what do you think needs to be done for this game to progress? What what do you reckon needs to be done for the women's game to sort of catch on more, as like you know? Uh, well, I think the women's super league, the new t uh, second tier. They're doing a WSL like two, aren't they? So yeah. That means that will get more fans along during the summer. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really good. Having our games on Sundays is really good. Mm -hmm. uh, I know us as a club, we we've got the opportunity to play a few games at Fratton Park this season. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really good. So just generally more backing from men's clubs really helps because it gets the fans along mm -hmm. just to see what women's football is really about. Mm -hmm. I think an early exit from the Euros didn't help things in some respects. I no, think in, not. in a they media were, sense, you know. They were really expected to do well, weren't they? Yeah, and no, definitely. With a lot of fans sort of hyped up about it, mm -hmm. they didn't do so well. Because if they'd sort of got got quite through to them, maybe the, the, the knockout stages or the you know even the semis or whatever, I think yeah, it would have made a great platform to increase. Exactly. The I guess they're gonna have to wait till the next World Cup, yeah, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh well, listen. Um, thanks ever so much for taking the time, and uh, and good luck for the rest of the season. Lovely meeting okay. you, nice. and. Uh, Take care. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers.